Chapter 2. This chapter discusses the design environment within MicroStation, or PowerGeoPack, in the F.SS4 workspace. Highlights of this chapter include DGN and DWG work modes, workspace preferences, screen layout, standard F.menu, and the MicroStation drawing tools. MicroStation provides an interface that is user-friendly and customizable. Most tools are accessed from toolboxes. In addition to various tools, MicroStation also works in one of three modes, DGN, DWG, or V7. The various modes maintain uniformity when working in older files or files in the DWG format. Additional controls for the actual design environment can be accessed via Workspace Preferences from the MicroStation menu. These settings can be stored as defaults so that every session of MicroStation operates in a standard manner. Drawing attributes are easy to control with MicroStation. The main controlling application is the Attributes toolbar, which facilitates setting the element symbology with which elements are placed into the design files. This is the Attributes toolbar. MicroStation natively reads and writes both the MicroStation DGN file format and the DWG file format thus enabling less data loss from sharing. To ensure compatibility with AutoCAD DWG and MicroStation V7 files, MicroStation V8 allows users to work in three different environments. DGN Capacity Work Mode, DWG Restriction Work Mode, and V7 Work Mode. The small square in the status bar at the bottom right corner of the screen tells you that right now we are in DGN Work Mode. If we were in DWG work mode because we'd opened up a DWG file, there would be a small AutoCAD icon right here. The Preferences dialog contains settings that customize the way MicroStation operates and looks. To access this dialog, select the MicroStation menu option, Workspace, Preferences. The settings in this dialog work at the system level, which means that they are not specific to any design file but are active no matter which design file is being worked on. This dialog has many options which are referred to throughout this course manual. The settings in this dialog work at the system level which means they are not specific to any design file but are active no matter which design file is being worked on. You'll notice here we are looking at the mouse wheel preferences. These preferences once again are saved in the f.ss4 UPF or user preference file which is located on your local drive regardless of whether you have a client-server installation or a standalone workstation installation of the f.ss4 software. Let's talk about the mouse. I'm going to draw a couple lines here. The mouse buttons serve three primary functions. Data, Reset, and Tentative. The left button is the Data Point button, or the Pick button. I click the left mouse button, and it allows me to activate a command or use a tool. If I click the right mouse button, it resets or exits the tool or cancels the tool. So when I say enter a data point, I mean left click. When I say reset, cancel, or exit, I mean right click. The other option is tentative. This applies to the snapping function of MicroStation. You'll notice the little yellow X here. That's the AccuSnap function. That's telling you key points that we can snap to to draw from. However, before AccuSnap existed, a tentative point was used. With two button mice, mouses, a two-button cord was used to enter a tentative point. I'm pressing both the left and right mouse button at the same time. You'll notice the white cross here lets you know that a tentative point has been entered. I have not accepted the tentative point. I've merely tentatively snapped. To accept the point, enter a data point. And now my tool is active. You can set on a wheel mouse to have the clicking down of the wheel be the tentative point. However, I have my mouse set so that clicking down on the mouse wheel pans the drawing. 
So you see my cursor turns into a little hand that is moving the drawing. To change these options, go to Workspace, Button Assignments. You see there's a number of combination buttons here so that you can have different functions associated with holding down certain keys and clicking certain mouse buttons. And you can create your own combinations of keys. Remapping the buttons allows you to set whether that tentative snap is a left and right button cord or whether it's the mouse wheel. And here you see the settings for data point as left button, tentative as left button, right button cord, and reset as the right button. If there was a middle button or additional buttons, you can set those functions here. Let's talk about the screen layout in f.ss4 for MicroStation or Power Geopack. MicroStation screen layout may be customized to open with components in the same position for every editing session. It may also be reorganized and changed on the fly during any editing session. FDOT has established a default layout that is set by the predefined FDOT workspace. The following is a review of the different components that make up the screen layout. This top bar here is called the application title bar. I may also refer to it as the title bar. As discussed previously, this section is called the attributes toolbar. This is the primary toolbar, which has options for models, references, level manager, and level display. This is the tasks pane, or the task dialog. We'll refer to this area here as the view window. This is the main task toolbox. And I actually access that by going to the main task right-clicking and selecting Open as Toolbox. Any of these tools can be opened as a toolbox from the task pane. This is the standard toolbox, which you can dock, and then it becomes the standard toolbar. Any of these toolbars can be undocked or left docked at the top of the application. Another thing to be aware of with toolboxes is you can right click on the toolbox and select what tools to have display. So if you're not going to be using certain tools and they're getting in the way in your toolbox, you can turn those tools off. The AccuDraw toolbar and what we refer to as the status bar. In the status bar you'll notice a number of things. At the bottom left corner of the status bar there are instructions on using whatever tool is active. So if you're using a tool and you're not super familiar with it and you need a little prompting, you'll notice that it'll prompt you for what the next step is. For example, I have Place Smart Line active and it says Enter First Vertex. I've entered my first vertex. It says Enter Next Vertex or Reset to Complete. and I'm clicking the reset button now. So if you're ever, ever lost and don't know exactly what the next step of the tool is, look at that bottom left corner of the status bar. This is particularly important as you take the next training course, which involves some more complex tools, which require you to pay attention to the prompts in the bottom left corner of that status bar. To access the MicroStation Message Center, simply click in the square right here, this will bring up the message center, which lists all the commands and messages that have occurred during this work session. If there's an error message, it'll be stored here, so you can open up the message center and go back and look for that error message. You can access your snaps and your locks and see what the active level is. We'll talk more about snaps and locks in a, another chapter. The standard F.menu. 
The f.menu is part of f.dot's delivered customized workspace. It is a floating menu bar that contains a collection of standard and discipline specific menus and command buttons designed to assist in plans production for f.dot projects. The f.dot menu automatically loads when the file open dialog interface is set to f.dot ss4 and is used to activate commands inside MicroStation through an efficient, portable, pull-down menu interface that accesses all f.dot CAD standards and customization. The standard f.dot menu is the base menu setup from which all selected discipline-specific menus are built upon. The menu bar settings such as display, color, opacity, or menu location can be modified by the user by right-clicking anywhere on the menu bar to open up a pop-up menu. I'm right-clicking. You'll see you can change the color of the menu, the opacity of the menu. If you move the menu somewhere, you can save settings so that it'll stick there. You can reload if something has changed, although you probably will never have to do this. This is mostly if you're editing the menu, which you do not have the ability to do. And of course, you can exit. Please don't do this. The F.dot standard menu provides links to the F.dot software versioning, discipline configuration access, CAD training support links, external resource links, and level library attachments. Help icons located by any of the F.dot menu options provide links to the associated help files. Currently I'm running F.dot SS4 MR10, that's maintenance release 10. We looked at the F.dot menu configuration tool earlier. F.dot desktop folder help f.dot menu help. This option takes you to the current working directory, that's to say the directory that whatever file you're working on lives in. It opens up Windows Explorer. Explore the f.dot ss4 directory. This takes you to the f.dot ss4 folder, whether that's on the server or on your standalone workstation. If we're doing a support call and you're not sure if you have a client server installation or workstation installation, or you know for a fact that you have a client server installation but you don't know where the server is, selecting explore f.ss4 directory will take us directly there. There are links to the Ashto, MUTCD, and SHSM website, f.basis of estimates, standard plans, design documents, the f.design manual, a link to the legacy f.plans preparation manual, the state of Florida county maps for your key sheets, and the f.traffic traffic engineering manual. Request CAD support will take you to our ShareWell issue log portal where you can enter a ticket for support. This link takes you to the CAD manual. Here's another link to the CAD GoToMeeting option. So if you're connecting to a GoToMeeting for support, this will take you to the website where you can enter your meeting ID. And this will take you to the f.cad website. Now you'll notice as we talked about the status bar in the bottom left corner of my screen, you'll see that each of these links, each of these menu options, is sending a command to MicroStation. And those commands appear in that bottom left corner. The Cell Apps menu provides tools for easy access to select and place cells from many cell libraries delivered and supported by FDOT. Help icons located by any of the FDOT menu options provide links to the associated help files. Cells are like clip art for CAD. F.dot does deliver a uh, extensive library of cells for use in F.dot plans. So this menu provides you with some extra tools that will help with that. The Actions menu provides links to F.dot tools and utilities commonly used by all disciplines such as the Create File Program, the Ad Hoc Management, Sheet Clipping and Labeling, and remember, help icons located by any of the F.dot menu options provide links to the associated help files. You'll see there's Create File, Set Geographic Coordinate System, Set Plot Scale, we'll talk about level filters later, Ad Hoc Manager, access to some of the sheet borders, you can launch Sheet Navigator from here, RF Clip which is a legacy sheet clipping tool, as well as our QC tools. That's all located on the Actions menu. The Design Apps menu provides links to additional F.dot design related apps commonly used by all disciplines such as File Cleanup, custom line style apps, reference file apps, and more. And, of course, help icons located by any of the f.dot menu options provide links to the associated help files. You'll find a link to Workspace Doctor here under Cleanup. Workspace Doctor is a custom tool 
which helps to resolve some issues that you may experience while working in MicroStation or PowerGeo Pack using the F.SS4 workspace. Here are some options to fix, flip, and clear line style issues. The standard F.menu is the basis on which the user can choose to build configurations for F.discipline specific menu options. One or more may be selected through the F.menu option standard configuration to display and provide links to F.tools and utilities directly associated to those specific disciplines for the ease of selection by the user. Note that icons located by any F.menu option provide links to the associated help files. Again, to configure your menu, you can select Standard Menu Configuration. You'll notice that I'm in the Standard Menu Configuration mode with all of the discipline-specific menus selected. Each of these menus mostly provides links to the associated cell libraries and any tools that are specific to that discipline. For example, the Drainage menu contains links to the Drainage VBAs. Geotechnical, Geotechnical Cell Library, as well as Report of Core Borings and Cone Sounding Tools. The Roadway uh, menu provides links to the Roadway Cell Libraries and Cell Web Pages. We'll talk about those more later. Traffic Control and Traffic Plans, again, mostly Cell Libraries and Cell Web Pages. At the far right end of the menu, there are a number of options. You can run Plot Scale, which we mentioned earlier. That's a custom F dot tool, which sets the plot scale of the file. You can run QC Quick, which is part of our QC tools. You can open a browser. This simply opens up the CAD Pilot browser. And although you can access Sheet Navigator from the Actions menu, you can also launch it from this icon at the end of the menu. Sheet Navigator is a sheet indexing tool, which we will not be talking about much in this course but be aware that it can be accessed from that button on the menu. And then you can access the f.help files and training video clips from the question mark help button at the end of the menu. I mentioned earlier, I just want to remind you that any of these tools on the task, any of these tool frames, can be opened as a toolbox. And once again, you can customize any of these toolboxes by clicking, right-clicking, and selecting what tools you'd like to turn on and turn off. You'll notice also under the Tools menu option, Attributes, Primary, and Standard. If you ever notice that one of your toolbars has disappeared, come up here to the Tools menu and see if you can figure out which one it is. The Attributes toolbar, of course, is the one that allows you to select Level, Color, Weight, and Line Style. The Primary Tools are your models, references, and level settings, etc. The standard toolbar, which I typically do not have docked, contains icons that refer to things on the file menu, such as new file, open file, save file, print, cut, paste, undo, redo, etc. I typically keep that closed. And let's talk about the attributes toolbar, or now the attributes toolbox. The Attributes Toolbox contains controls for setting the active element attributes that control the appearance of elements in a design file. These attributes include color, line, style, weight, and are collectively referred to as symbology. You'll also notice there's a level name here. Every level has correct symbology associated with it. For example, um, concrete is color 0, line style 0, weight of 2. Curb ramp is color 8, line style 0, weight of 1. You can change these attributes and in some situations like structures I'm aware that they do allow you to change the line weight, uh, specifically in the case of like drawing rebar. However, in most other situations, you'll want to leave the color weight and line style to what they refer to as by level setting. So a level has an associated color weight and line style, and those color weights and line styles are considered by level. They belong to that level. Let's talk about the 
primary toolbar or now the primary tool box. As mentioned before, this does give you access to the models dialog. If you click the button, it opens the models dialog as a dialog. You can see we only have one model in this file, and that's the default model. We'll talk more about models later. You can also click the little black arrow next to the icon. This will open up a quick dialog, which disappears as soon as you click outside of it. Same thing with the references dialog. You'll notice we have a number of reference files attached to this file. We'll talk more about references later. And of course you can access the quick references dialog by clicking the arrow. Raster manager, where you can manage your raster attachments, such as uh, aerial photography. Point clouds, which we won't be talking about. Saved views, which we will be talking about. Your level manager, which shows you all of the levels available to you in your current work mode. Level display, which allows you to turn levels on and off, which we'll be talking about in another couple of chapters. Your cells dialog. Element information tool, this dialog lets you get information about the elements that you select. We'll be talking about that later as well. Toggle AccuDraw. We briefly mentioned AccuDraw, and we'll be talking about that a lot more later. But that's where you toggle AccuDraw on and off. I'm going to go ahead and dock this down at the bottom. Enable Pop Set. I'm not a particularly uh, big fan of Pop Set. Pop Set causes the uh, Tool settings dialog, which I'm not sure where the tool settings dialog ran off to is. Oh, here it is. Way over here. Causes the tool settings dialog to dis uh, sorry, causes the tool settings dialog to disappear if your cursor gets near it but isn't on it. And that provides you the option of, for example, with smart line, if you're drawing a smart line and oh I have to draw through the dialog, it goes away and then comes back. Um, but it also makes it difficult to uh, if you're reaching over for the dialog and then don't get close enough, it disappears, and I'm not a giant fan of, of Pop Set, so I leave that disabled. But that is there for you. And you can access the settings for Pop Set, so you can change how it functions. I'm just going to leave it disabled. I showed you earlier how you can right click on a toolbox and select what tools are active. This toolbox actually does not have all the tools active. Another tool is the Key In Browser. If you access the key in browser, this allows you to type in commands directly to MicroStation or Power Geopack. And there's a selection of commands to start with and modifiers for those commands that will populate in these windows. There are some handy key ins that we may or may not be using throughout the course. And just be aware that the key in browser can be accessed from the primary toolbar if it's enabled. For the most part, when you start up MicroStation in the default mode, uh, and in the f.workspace you won't see that button on the primary toolbar. Another way to access that key in browser, the same key in browser, is go to utilities, key in, that's utilities, key in, that'll bring in the key in browser as well where you can type commands directly in. The task dialog is typically docked to the left side of the screen. However, it can be dragged and undocked from the left side of the screen as a floating dialog or docked to the right side of the screen by dragging towards the right side of the screen and selecting the little icon on the right. To free up more real estate you can select the unpin button at the top right corner of the dialog and the task dialog will be pinned to the left side of the screen. You see this little tab here by mousing over the tab the task dialog appears at the left of the screen. I don't particularly like having it docked that way. <laughs> to navigate the task dialog, you can simply fly open any of these individual tasks, or if you go to this little drop down arrow here, you can select different task dialogs, such as the f.plan development dialog. You'll notice the f.plans development dialog has tasks that are specific to the f.plans development workflow, such as typical sections, key sheets, roadway plans, existing features, etc.
Any of these floating dialogues can also be docked to either side of the screen and the pin button can be used to turn them into a little tab that can be moused over. If you pin multiple dialogues, they'll appear as multiple tabs and mousing over those tabs will cause those dialogues to fly out. The dialogues from the primary toolbar can be docked at the top and bottom of the screen in a similar manner. Now you see the references dialog and the models dialog are docked at the bottom of the screen. To undock them, simply select the pin icon and then drag them back to the middle of the screen. I talked about the toolboxes earlier, how you can open up a toolbox from any of these tasks. They can also be docked at the top of the screen. So you can completely customize your workspace based on the tools that you use most frequently. Another way to access toolboxes, if you're not sure where they are, you can go to the Tools menu. The Tools menu does have a fairly exhaustive list of the different toolboxes that are available to you. You can also select toolboxes from the bottom of the tools menu. This opens up the toolboxes dialog where you can view an alphabetical list of the different toolboxes that you can open. For example, XYZ text, which I use probably twice a year and always forget how to find it. This brings us to exercise 2.1, reviewing the design environment. First, open up a MicroStation session in the f.workspace. You'll do this by double-clicking on the f.ss4 folder on your desktop and double-clicking on the f.ss4 icon to launch MicroStation or PowerGeoPack in the f.ss4 workspace. This brings us to exercise 2.1, reviewing the design environment. To begin, Open a MicroStation or PowerGeopack session in the f.workspace. Click on the f.ss4 folder on your desktop and select the f.ss4 for PowerGeopack or for MicroStation icon. Set the f.workspace settings. Be sure that user is set to f.ss4. Set the project to our project number and make sure interface is also set for f.ss4. Set the files type to CAD files, DGN, DWG, DXF. Select the design directory in the look in field by using the drop down arrow next to the field to navigate to E projects, the FPID number, and locate the roadway folder. Once selected, the name list box should populate. Select the file name dsgnrd01 from the list. A preview of the selected file will display on the right. Click Open, and a MicroStation or PowerGeopack session will open with the selected file. Review the MicroStation application window. Locate the title bar with all of the file and setting information. Locate the default toolboxes docked at the top with the standard MicroStation menu. Locate the default tasks dialog docked to the left side, the default element selection tool settings window, and the default view groups and Accutraw docked at the bottom of the status bar. Title bar, MicroStation menu, attributes toolbar, primary toolbar, Tasks pane or Tasks dialog, View groups, AccuDraw, and Status bar. From the MicroStation menu, select Settings, Design File, 
the Design File Settings dialog will display for review. Select each category to review the changing settings pane for each. From the MicroStation menu, select Workspace Preferences. The Preferences dialog will display for review. Select each category item to review the changing settings pane for each. Select the Operations category and confirm set the settings as shown below. Click OK when completed. Do not exit F.SS4. Exercise 2.2 Accessing and Displaying Tools and Toolboxes Continuing in DSGN RDO one dgn from the Tasks dialog, select the F.Plans Development Task or Workflow. Notice that an additional F.Plans Development Task tab displays with the preset F.Tasks. Select the down arrows of roadway plans on the F.Tasks to review the tools. Click on the F.Tools taskbar and select each of the layout modes. Right click on the roadway plans taskbar and select Open Roadway Plans as a toolbox. Select the Tasks tab, the Task dialog displays. Click the down arrow to the right of the Tasks tab and review the Task Navigator drop-down list. Toolboxes. From the MicroStation menu, select Tools and hover the cursor over the tools in the list to review pop-up menus of respective tools. Hover over Text and select Place Text. the text editor window appears. From the text editor window, select the close icon. From the MicroStation menu, select Tools, Toolboxes to review all toolboxes, tool frames, and tasks. From the tool listing window, scroll down and select the Modify Toolbox and click OK. The Modify Toolbox displays and the Toolboxes dialog disappears. Right click on the Modify Toolbox to bring up the Tool Selection pop-up menu. Notice the tools can be checked and unchecked for display. From the Tool Selection pop-up menu, select List. Uncheck Trim to Intersection and Insert Vertex, then click OK. These tools are removed from the Modify Toolbox. Select and hold the title bar of the Modify Toolbox and then drag it to the right side of the application window. The toolbox will jump to the side and reduce in size to a toolbar. Release the hold on the title bar. It is now docked to the side of the screen. Select the drop-down to access Task Navigator. Select the main classic task. Locate Place Smart Line. Left-click to select the Place Smart Line tool. 
the Tool Settings dialog now displays the settings for Play Smart Line. Strike the Escape key to display the keyboard shortcuts. Exercise 2.3 Dockable Dialogs Continuing in DSGN RDO 1, from the main classic task, select Copy from the Manipulate Classic toolbox. Select and drag the Copy Element Tool Settings dialog by the title bar across each of the docking indicators displayed in the window. Notice a transparent box jumps to the position indicated by the arrow. Release to the right side, the Copy Element Tool Settings dialog docks to the right side of the screen. Select the Unpin button, and now the Docked Copy Element Tool Settings dialog becomes a tab docked to the right side of the screen. You'll notice the Tool Settings dialog still changes when different tools are selected. From the Primary Tools toolbar, open the Models dialog. Now open the References dialog. Dock the Models dialog to the bottom of the screen and select the Pin button. Now drag the References dialog to dock it to the bottom of the screen as well, also selecting the Pin button. Both the Models and References dialogs are now docked to the bottom of the screen and can be accessed by mousing over their respective tabs.